Guitar tips, guitar tips, just the tips, just for you. Guitar tips. Hello and welcome to Guitar Tips. My name is Adam Levy. This is my weekly video blog series. I post a new tip here each and every Friday. Uh, first things first, I want to apologize for the uh, distracting noises that you may hear. Maybe I shouldn't say anything at all, but they're distracting me. Um, and we're all in this together. Uh, in front of my house right now, a big tow truck, not the kind of tow truck that would tow away your your Camry, but like a big industrial tow truck is rigging up uh, to tow away a like a, some kind of bulldozer tractor thing. I don't know. I don't know anything about tractors or bulldozers, but um, there's a huge machine uh, putting chains on another huge machine and trying to get it up on the piggyback, and it's right in, in front of my house here in what is normally a very quiet corner of. Northeast Los Angeles. So, apologies uh, for the noise. I have to. This is the time of day when I'm, uh, when I have a minute to shoot this, and this is what's happening. So, I don't know. Maybe there's a tip in there. Uh, I don't know. But that's not what today's tip is. Uh, before we get to the tip, uh, a couple orders of business. Uh, one is I want to thank the Martin String Company for making this episode of Guitar Tips possible. Um, there are strings on this guitar. Uh, they are not Martin strings only because I'm borrowing this guitar and um, uh, I'm borrowing it from my friend Mason Stoops. If you don't know him, you should check him out. Great guitar player here in Los Angeles and a uh, really uh, a real lover of guitars and guitar gear. You should follow him on Instagram. I think it's just Mason Stoops, M-A-S-O-N-S-T-O-O-P-S. -S -O -O Lots of cool gear shots. Anyway, he was over at my house the other day and I was kind of fawning over this guitar and he said, oh man, you should just borrow it. It's it's an amazing guitar. It's a, a uh, national made uh, here in Los Angeles, I found it. I didn't even know that. Uh, quite old. I'm going to say 1930. I don't know if that's true, but thereabouts. Um, it's a 14 fret Style O, really freaking cool guitar. So thank you, Mason, and thank you, uh, National Guitar. But mostly, <laughs> got a little distracted there. I want to thank the Martin String Company for sponsoring this episode, even though, full disclosure, these are uh, some other strings. I, I, uh, I wouldn't borrow somebody's guitar and then change the strings on it. Um, Anyway, uh, okay, so that's one thing. The other thing I wanted to mention is that, uh, um, oh, subscribe. You can subscribe. It's a easy thing to do. There's a big red button uh, somewhere down there. I'm not sure where to point, really. But somewhere down below, there is a red button that says subscribe. If you click on that, you will be a subscriber. Um, my goal is to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of this year, and we're actually pretty close. So uh, if you're not a, a subscriber, please do. Um, and if you're already a subscriber, uh, tell your friends. Uh, share this on Twitter or, or Facebook or just, I don't know, paint a sign, a sandwich board sign, and just walk around on the street and with a sign that says guitar tips just for you on the front and back and when people ask you what it's all about you can tell them what guitar tips is all about uh, and then you could tell me cuz I'm still I'm still figuring it out myself but here we are uh, this week's guitar tip lo and behold here we are uh, minutes in and I haven't even revealed what this week's tip is uh, this week's tip is uh, what slash chords are all about? What slash chords are all about? And uh, this is just inspired by actually teaching and uh, talking about slash chords in one of my classes at school. I, I teach at the uh, Los Angeles College of Music in Pasadena. And uh, some students 
seem to be confused about it. Uh, if you're confused about it, I hope this tip will leave you uh, less confused. So right off the bat, a slash chord uh, is called that because we use a slash when we write it down, when we write the name of the chord down. So this has something to do with um, nomenclature, musical nomenclature. Um, so you might see, for example, a symbol that says G slash B. And I'm not talking about a horizontal line where you say, where you see G horizontal line B like a fraction. That's actually something else. And maybe we'll get to that in another tip. What I'm talking about is G and then uh, slash B. Okay. Same kind of slash you'd see in a in a URL or uh, any other place you see slashes. Um, so G, uh, we say uh, in, when we verbalize it, we say G over B. Uh, that's the most common way to say it. What it is is G, a G chord or G, you know, a G triad could be, could be a bigger G chord with B in the bass. So, uh, the front part of the slash chord tells you what the, the basic harmony is. And then the letter after the slash chord is just a bass note. So that may, it, it might seem complicated, but it, it's really, um, hopefully for clarity. So slash chords come up in a, in a couple of, uh, instances. And, uh, I'm going to talk about three common ways that we see slash chords, okay? Uh, one is when you have a chord and you have this kind of moving bass line. So this, all the harmony here is basically C, but we've got this going down. possible way to write that out would be C, C over B. I'm kind of cheating a little bit here because there's a D note in here that's not really part of a C chord. If you really wanted to play C over B, you'd, you'd, you'd keep this stuff intact and you just walk down and I'm going to change my fingers here for just, oh boy, the, the big truck just went away. That's great. Okay. So that's C. If you walk the bass note down, th this, this finger is doing nothing, so I'm just going to hide it for now. And then I'm going to refinger that just because I think that's a little easier to play. So we'll go like that. That's C over B or C slash B. This is uh, a, a common A minor 7 when we sing, but you could call it C over A. I, I, I wouldn't. I, I would call it A minor 7. But if you wrote C, C slash B, C slash A, at least it would indicate in your little chart that there's some consistency in, in the upper part of the chord, okay? So if you went from C over B to A minor 7, somebody might choose a different voicing, and uh, this kind of indicates that the upper part of the chord is staying consistent while the bass note is moving. So uh, kind of six and one, half a dozen of the other, you can make a choice there. Um, and then I went to this last chord. Again, this finger's not doing anything, so I'm just going to tuck it away. This is C over G. It's a C chord with G in the bass. I'm not uh, actually fretting the C note because in my right hand, I'm not articulating uh, the string that, that, that that's on. So I still have these same three notes on top now with G in the bass. So, so C. C over B, C over A, or A minor 7 if you prefer, and then C over G. So that's one way that we use slash chords. It's just to indicate a moving bass line under uh, whatever the chord progression is. Uh, if you have a bass player, he or she should play those notes. That's Those slash chords are really for their benefit to indicate that there's a bass line happening without writing in music notation you know, in the staff what, what those uh, pitches are, okay? So that's one way. Uh, another common way that we see slash chords is 
uh, just common inversions. So uh, that chord that we just saw, uh, C over G, you could call that uh, a second inversion C chord. And inversions, if you don't know, here's a, a tip within a tip. Um, if you have a C chord, uh, first in, or any chord, but I'm going to talk about C because that's where we are right now. First inversion C chord means uh, we take um, the note off the bottom and put it on the top. Is that the best way to describe it? I don't know if that's the best way to describe it. What I'm saying is instead of having the root on the bottom, we're gonna have the third on the bottom, okay? Let's cut to the chase here, tippers. Right? Because I'm thinking of it if we were starting in a, in a more uh, typical kind of, um, at the piano, if you played a C triad, it would, it would be more this shape. This is C, E, G. And the first inversion, would be like this. So we're taking the bottom note, moving it up an octave. So this note goes to here, and these notes stay the same, but we just have to move them to another string set. So that's what I'm talking about. So literally, that's C, that's C first inversion, and that's C second inversion, which will have the fifth on the bottom. So this is C, E, G, E, G, C, G, C, E. Okay. But if we're get, talking about just more kind of, oh, you know, open position, grabbing chord shapes, uh, this is C, this is C over E. So you could also call that a first inversion C chord. Uh, but in slash chords, which is what this tip is about, that would be C over E. And then you'd have C over G. That's the second inversion. So C, C over E, C over and those chords, again, tend to work in a voice leading way. If I'm going from C to F, I could just go C, F, and all these voices are moving nicely, but we've got the bass note going from C all the way to F. If you want to help connect those dots, you could go C, C over E, and then to F. So now the bass line goes, okay, so then we'll pass through F sharp diminished, and then C over G, I don't know, I'm just making something up here, G sharp diminished, A minor, F minor over A flat, that's a first inversion, F minor chord, C over G, D7 over F sharp, F, C over E, E flat diminished, or uh, we could make it an A flat 7 over E flat, so that's a second inversion A flat 7 chord. I'm, I'm getting into some other areas, I'm, I'm trying to sneak uh, many tips into one tip here, but I, I hope... Uh, that you're clear so far. So we've talked about two ways to use uh, slash chords. One is to indicate a moving bass. Another is just to get some different sounds out of basic chords by uh, putting the, the, the third in the bass or the fifth in the bass. Uh, if you know Paul McCartney's song, Maybe I'm Amazed, that's a neat example of uh, some slash chords. So it goes... Uh, this is a B flat chord. I don't know. I, I like this fingering for it, even though it's not the most practical fingering. You could play it down here. Let's just do that. That'll be easier. B flat, F over A. So I'm playing an F chord with A in the bass, and then C over G, and then G. So maybe I'm amazed at the way you. So that's a, a really uh, effective, instead of just going, having uh, this specific bass line uh, ha turns the har makes something more out of the harmony than what would ordinarily be there. So 
two kinds of slash chords we've used so far. Now the third kind is a little more sophisticated and um, jazz oriented where instead of just putting the root third or fifth in the base of a triad, we can take a triad and put it over a tone that's not closely related. For example, uh, here's um, G over C. This is A over D. You could call this D major 9, but with no third. Root 5, 7, 9. It's different sounding than this, which has the third. Root 3, 7, 9. Now I'm going root 5, 7, 9. So it's a major 9 chord, but has a specific sound because it doesn't have the third. And that's kind of cool. Okay. This is very kind of steely band sounding. Same kind of chords here. This is D over G. You could play it this way. It's C over F. And you could get as experimental as you want. You could have a D, a, a D triad over B flat. You just have to figure out. Like one one way to do this is just to try everything and see what piques your your ears, what piques your interest. So here's D over D. Here's D over E flat. Interesting. Here's D over E. Interesting sound. It's not really minor, but it kind of sounds minor. -y. It's not really dominant, but it sounds kind of dominant. Could, it could be some kind of E7 or E minor 7, but there's no third, so we don't know. D over, I'm just going chromatically now, D over F. I might call that F13 flat 9. It's some of the notes we need for an F13 flat 9. It's not a complete chord. D over F sharp, that's just the first inversion. D over G. Again, I'm just moving the bass line chromatically here. That's that kind of steely dan uh, G major 9 with no third kind of sounding chord. D over A flat. Pretty weird. I don't know. How we'd use that. That's maybe A flat seven, flat five, flat nine, maybe. D over A is just a second inversion with the fifth in the bass. D over B flat, you could call that B flat major seven sharp five. D over B is just B minor seven. D over C, that could be kind of a C Lydian chord. Could maybe be a D7 with the 7 in the bass. Just depends on the context. And then D over C sharp. It's hard to think of where that would work, except like we were talking about in the in the first example, just in a kind of descending bass line. So uh, this is a very long tip. I'm almost at 20 minutes. I'm gonna stop here. Uh, that's plenty of stuff to chew on until next week. So, um, guitar tips, uh, what slash chords are all about? Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tip. I hope you found it valuable. Thanks to the Martin String Company. Thanks to Mason Stoops for lending me this awesome guitar. Uh, tune in next week. Please subscribe. Uh, stay tuned and take good care.